Hello, my name is Anna Rowe. Welcome to Wilson Hall, which is the home of the psychology department on the beautiful campus at Vanderbilt University. Hi, I'm Hai Dong Lu. I'm the first author on this paper and currently an assistant professor at the Institute of Neuroscience in Shanghai, China. Hello, my name is Gang Chen. I'm Hisashi Tanigawa. We're here today to tell you about maps in the primate brain that encode the perception of motion direction. Motion cues in the visual world are used primarily for two purposes. The first is to detect the direction of things moving in the world, due either to object motion or to self-motion. The second is for the definition of objects, such as the process of figure ground segregation. An example of this is a bird, which is literally invisible without motion, but becomes quite clear with motion. In primates, the perception of motion starts in the cerebral cortex with direction-selective neurons in the primary visual cortex, or V1. That is, these neurons respond to one direction of motion, but not to the opposite direction. These directionally selective cells in V1 project to an area that specializes in motion processing, called area MT. MT has been the central focus for studies on visual motion perception and is known to integrate information from V1 to generate global motion percepts. Anatomical studies have shown that there is a second pathway from V1 to MT that goes through area V2. V2 is known to be composed of three interleaved functional stripe types. Seen here in a tissue stain for an enzyme called cytochrome oxidase, you can see a thin stripe, a pale stripe, and a thick stripe. The projections to MT from V2 arise from the thick stripes of V2. Thus far, there's been little evidence to suggest that V2 is involved in motion processing. However, given that V2 provides inputs to MT, we decided to take a closer look. To examine this question, we used intrinsic signal optical imaging methods to map motion responsive locations in visual cortex. We view the cortex through implanted windows over visual cortex. This imaging method detects local darkening of the cortex due to deoxygenation changes related to increases in neural activity. We conducted optical imaging in monkeys viewing stimuli that consisted of either directional moving gratings or moving random dot fields. To the naked eye, the view through the chamber reveals the cortical surface marked by a network of cortical vessels. With optical imaging, we see distinct functional structures in V1 and V2. The ocular dominance pattern, which is clearly seen in V1, clearly marks the V1-V2 border. This is an activation pattern that results when the monkey views vertical versus horizontal gratings. This is an orientation map showing the orientation domains within V1 as well as the orientation domains that fall within the pale and thick stripes of V2. When we image for color, we see a map for color that reveals blobs in V1 and alternating color stripes in V2 corresponding to the thin stripes. These thick, pale, and thin stripes are interleaved within V2. When we map for motion direction, for example, with rightward and leftward moving random dots, we see no activation structure in V1, which appears as an even gray, but a strong signature in V2. We notice that in V2, these activations fell in the thick stripes. If we compare the activation maps for orientation, for color, and for motion, we see that the motion activation zones fall within the thick stripes. In fact, if we zoom in on a single thick stripe, we see that different locations within the thick stripe code for different directions of motion. This direction preference is easily seen in this movie where the arrow indicates the current stimulus motion direction. So to summarize, our findings are the first to demonstrate directional maps in primate V2. The implications of this finding are twofold. Whereas previous studies have emphasized the V1 to MT pathway, our results point to a newfound role for V2 in motion processing. Since V2 provides inputs to both the dorsal and ventral pathways, we suggest that it may play important roles in both motion perception during active vision 
and form for motion perception in object identification.